They've met with the pastor week after week. He's taught them our precepts and Christ Jesus to seek. He shared the law of our God, which we strive to keep, the prayers, the creeds, and the sacraments deep. Now these young saints are right to partake in Christ's body and blood, all for his sake. A gift you are seeking to commemorate this? Ad Crucem has just what you won't want to miss. We've got icons, art, ornaments, jewellery, and more. Greeting cards, crucifixes, posters, gifts galore. Your catechized friend will love what you give and treasure the gift all the days that they live. Visit adcrucem.com. That's A-D-C-R-U-C-E-M dot com. Listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I'm Rachel. We are well within the spring pollen season in St. Louis. So Ew. we're going to take a little road trip, also boat trip slash plane trip, and go a little international today. This is super exciting. This is our first international trip in the Ladies Lounge. We're going to visit a fellow Lutheran lady in Montevideo, Uruguay. Ooh, How many of you guys mm-hmm. have been to Uruguay? Not me. No, Not me. None of us have been to Uruguay. So this is super exciting. We have an international adventure in Lutheranism today. So Erin, who do we have with us in the lounge today? Today we have a missionary. Yes! I am Woo! super excited. We have Angie Sharp, who is one of our LCMS missionaries in Uruguay. She's joining us. She's not actually here in the studio. She herself is in Uruguay. And I want you to tell us a little bit about what you do there, Angie, to get us started, just so we all have a a baseline. Very good. Well, my official title is International Educator. And that kind of breaks down into a, a multitude of things, as is Lutheran church work, as you all know. Mm -hmm. And so my main thing is I teach. I teach in our liceo, which is our like middle school, upper school in Montevideo. We have a Lutheran school here. uh, San Pablo or St. Paul is the name. And right now I'm teaching math in English because we have a bilingual program here. And I also teach English classes to adolescents and adults. And I also run the children's ministry and help to train teachers and Sunday school teachers and things like that in the area. Okay, excellent. Well, when you were here, you were recently in the States for home service. And while you were here, we actually cornered you at (laughs) literally, (laughs) literally, literally, it was was kind of aggressive, honestly, it was really (laughs) at the IC and we're like, hey, we have an idea. Because Holy Week is coming up, and we thought it might be really interesting to hear a little bit about Holy Week outside of outside of the Midwest. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> we're going to Uruguay. <laughs> yes, in sort yes. of a, a norto- notoriously secular mm-hmm. environment. Mm-hmm. It's yes. true. It's yes. true. And so, start by giving us a little sense of. The country of Uruguay. I mean, mm-hmm. honestly, if I, I had to Google right- it as we were starting this conversation, <laughs> um, just to remind myself where it was, mm-hmm. whether they spoke Spanish or Portuguese, you know, what, yes. what, whether it's the one that France still somehow owns, but no, that's no, a different one. That's a different um, one. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, give us a geography lesson for the day. All right. Well, geography is not my best subject, but I, I know a little bit about Uruguay. It, the interesting thing is Uruguay is this small country that's kind of tucked in between Brazil and Argentina. And there was a lot of unrest actually in the area uh, in the 1800s, a lot of wars being fought between Brazil and Argentina. And so they've created this kind of buffer state. That's what Uruguay kind of has become, this mm-hmm. space that's not okay. Brazil or Argentina. And so they <laughs> declared independence from both. But that the demilitarized took a long time. zone of Uruguay, yeah, is a little bit like that, <laughs> and it it's kind of a, evolved differently than Latin America, which is the interesting thing because there was such an English influence in in the area because England was here for for a while to help kind of balance this independent 
area, but also very European. We had a lot of Spanish and Italian that moved to Uruguay, and a lot of them actually were revolutionaries in in Europe. And so we're kind of ahead of, of where Latin America was at the time because of all these new ideas that these Europeans had. So there is a great separation of church and state in the early 1900s and complete separation of of church and state. And what's happened is Uruguay has become one of the most secular nations in the Americas. Really? Mm. Okay. Huh. That I did not know. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how then does the, the Lutheran church fit into this super secular society? Well, the, the Lutheran church has been here for about 75, I think over 75 years now. We are celebrating our 75 year anniversary of our church. At the same time, we were celebrating the 500 years of the Reformation. Um, So we're closer to to 80 now. But there were actually immigrants from Slovenia and other parts of Europe that moved to Uruguay that were Lutheran. And that's how our particular church started. There were other German Lutherans in the area that came during, I think, before World War II, actually. And so that's kind of where Lutheranism came to Uruguay and really the area. Lots of Lutherans in Argentina and Brazil as well. Hmm. So how does that work then with such a, I mean, we think we have separation of church and state in the U.S., but I'm sure it looks very, very, very different in Uruguay. How does that work having that separation of church and state and yet having this Lutheran church that's been around for quite a while? It's a little bit different than how we think of separation of church and state in the United States, because In the United States, when we think of that the government is separate from church, we think that the government has to treat all of the churches equally, right? That it has to be fair. But in Uruguay, it's more like completely staying out and not allowing the church to enter any public space whatsoever. So it's more Mm. discriminating equally (laughs) against the Uh the churches. So then a little shift in the, the mentality there. They are respectful of, you know, what people believe. That's okay. You can believe that. But at the same time, it, it's like, don't push that on other people. You know, don't try to bring it uh, too much into the public square. Everyone's just allowed to believe what they want to believe. So how does that work for a missionary? Your job is to put the faith out there and right. invite other people yes. into it. I think it looks a lot different in Uruguay because relationships are super important. You know, Mm -hmm. I don't think we would have a lot of success if we were just out there knocking on doors and, you know, yelling things from the street corner and and other activities that we might do like that. But it's more about caring for people, loving people, serving people and building those relationships so that they they know that you care about them and then they want to hear what you have to say. Mm -hmm. That sounds actually a little bit like America. I'm not sure we've had a great deal of success yelling from street corners lately, mm-hmm. <laughs> either when it comes to evangelism. True. Um, <laughs> you mentioned relationships. What are some of the other, I don't know, characteristics of Uruguayan culture that, that you have come to enjoy? Well, people tend to be very open and and very warm for the most part, but at the same time, kind of hard to get to know. Because Uruguay is a small country, Montevideo is the capital and we have like 1.6 million people, but it kind of still has a small town feel. Everybody knows Mm -hmm. everybody kind of thing. And so people still have their friend groups that they've had since they were in school, in high school. So sometimes it can be challenging to kind of work your way into a group that already feels like, oh, we have all the friends that, Mm -hmm. that we want, that we've had, you know, forever. So that means that we have to be really mindful of that when we're inviting people to things and, and looking to see how we can start to make correction, uh, connections with people. And a big thing for us has been through our family. Family is mm. really important in Uruguay. Mm. And so when I meet new people, it's usually through my kids or other family things that we do through church or the school. Mm. That also sounds... <laughs> a little familiar. Yes. <laughs> I think I think the world the world is the world, but of course Uruguay Uruguay is a very distinctive yes. kind of place. Yes. And that was one reason we wanted to talk to you right now and get a feel for 
kind of what Holy Week is like there because so many of our holidays are very American centric, you mm -hmm. know, like not everyone celebrates Halloween, not not everyone celebrates the 4th of July. Mm. But Christians all around the world all celebrate Easter. And so it's a time of great I think unity, worldwide worldwide unity in the Christian faith. Although, I mean, of course, the Orthodox, they're always a couple weeks late, but <laughs> they get there. They get there. <laughs> it's one week after this year. <laughs> <laughs> the churches are aligning or close to it. No, so can you tell us, obviously, there's so much we share, but what is distinctive about Easter in Uruguay, both in the Lutheran community and if there's anything like in the broader community? Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not the, you know, Spanish Catholic free for all that it is in a lot of other Latin American countries. But True. tell us what it's like. I think the most unique thing is that it's not really a religious holiday anymore, which really mm -hmm. it, I say that there are people who celebrate Easter and it's the, the high religious holiday that we think it is. But mm -hmm. when I was talking about the separation of church and state, this was something that the government did purposefully to take power away from the church. And so what they did at the same time is that they renamed holidays, they renamed streets, they they replaced the things in life that were in reference to religion and faith with other things that they thought are are still good, but it's a replacement. So they made family really important. They made, you know, like nationalism, pride and a verb important. And football's always been important, soccer. <laughs> you know, has always been important. And and these are kind of like the big three now. So Holy Week, some people say Semana Santa. Some people say Holy Week and will always say that. But the official mm. name for Holy Week is actually Tourism Week. Ew. Huh. What? It is. And it always follows Holy Week? And it always like, follows it Holy Week. Oh, it what a changes every Ew. year. What a uh -huh. coincidence. Yes. yes. <laughs> Tourism week. So do they Tourism have a different week, name right? for like Good Friday, Easter? Like, No, within the week, I most people still refer to those holy names that we have for these days. But what they've done is they have encouraged Uruguayans to go out and see Uruguay during this week. Everybody has vacation. The only no, people who are no, working no. during Tourism Week are people who work in the service industry, supermarkets, and things like that. Everybody else has vacation. So what do you do when everybody has vacation? You go somewhere. And so all of the departments have things where they're like, come to this festival, come to this event, come mm -hmm. spend Holy Week or Tourism Week uh, in Paysandu, in Salto. And they all have their own little things that they, they like to do during this That's week. That's devious. Mm -hmm. Come spend tourism week anywhere but in your home church. <laughs> exactly. So we actually Sad. have lower attendance at times like Easter and Christmas than we do during the year. Mm. Woof. Wow. wow. That is big woof. Yeah. yeah. So it's obviously really hard. it's something that even in the church then you struggle with. Um, yes. Okay. Well, for many okay. people, it's it's a choice to be able to have a vacation spend time mm -hmm. with family or go to church sure. and especially right. for new christians that's a really hard choice to make yeah your whole family yeah. is together and maybe you're the only one who's a practicing christian or one of a few mm -hmm. and everybody's like oh come on we're we're starting the the food at this time and you're like oh sorry i can't be there till later because i'm going to church that can be a really hard choice mm -hmm. it yeah. is it is i mean we have trouble we have trouble enough in this country with with those family tensions of, mm -hmm. you know, there are some churches that have Christmas Eve services and some don't, you know, so that they can spend more time snuggling with family. Yes. And I imagine that problem is exacerbated. Yes. Very much in a, it sounds like a systemically secular society. Yes. Well, I think they didn't mean to do this, but essentially what's happened is that atheism has become the national religion of Uruguay. <laughs> And Oops. I don't think that was a purposeful thing. It's just kind of when you take everything away, what you have left is the absence of it, right? And that's right. what atheism is. Mm -hmm. Do you sense that the people in your congregation are, there's a temptation there to acquiesce to the secular side of like tourism week during Holy Week? Or um, do they sort of see Holy Week as like this really special and sacred time that 
is taken very and held very highly. I think that's something that we're still trying to establish with our members, like this idea of Holy Week, Mm -hmm. Easter, Christmas being like a a sacred time, you know, it's not just another service. It's not, Mm -hmm. you know, and, Mm -hmm. and that the most important thing would be to bring your family to it, right? To spend it together in family. And I think that's what we're building towards. I think that's what we're working towards and what we're asking people to do. Bring your family, invite your family. And I think that's something that we'll be working on for a long time. Yeah. Well, and it's not, we were, we were just talking about uh, Adiaphora in mm-hmm. a recent episode and looking at the Augsburg Confession and how they were saying, they specifically called out, they said, Easter celebration is great, but it's not essential right. to mm-hmm. faith. You know, that you're not saved because you go to church on Easter. Right. Now, obviously, going to church on Easter is a very good thing that will strengthen mm-hmm. your faith mm-hmm. and, you know, fill you with joy for the for the t- seasons mm-hmm. to come. But I guess it's it's probably a helpful thing for you to remember as you look out at the empty pews mm-hmm. during Holy Week services. And I think as you build traditions and it becomes people remembering, oh, this is what we did last year, that mm-hmm. becomes a little bit easier yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. to want to be there on, on Easter. Yeah. So how was it for for your family coming into that with the background that you have going into this place? So I, I ask because I remember when I when I served and lived in Japan, mm-hmm. also not a country that has a mm-hmm. <laughs> Christian mm-hmm. culture. And so, for example, for Christmas, they would celebrate church Christmas. And I remember church having Christmas. that be... That was always the Sunday that was closest to Christmas because nobody gets Christmas off. In oh, Japan. right. And mm. it's also it's a hard thing to ask for vacation even in Japan. Like it's got its own. That's its own. <laughs> <laughs> so like, to expect people <laughs> to be able to actually come out on a non Sunday was a challenging thing. So they chose to do church Christmas on that Sunday. But for me, I remember being like, but it's, but what about Christmas Eve? <laughs> but, 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 but what about, but what about Christmas Day? And it felt really hard. And I, I struggled with that and wrestled with it. And Rachel, you're right that those aren't actually, there is value in it, but there's also value in observing it. And it's not, there's nothing magical about the one day that makes it right. better. There's than no it. holy obligation in the Lutheran right, church. Right, exactly. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Did you did you experience any of that as your family coming into a place that doesn't have that sort of culture? And I don't. I'm curious. Did your family establish any of your own traditions mm. to mark the week? That's a good question. Even before maybe the church itself has some of those. Did you bring any of your own family traditions with you? I I think that's something that as missionaries, this is a, a big question because. So much of what we think of as holidays are surrounded by traditions and and things that we always do that makes it feel like Easter or feel like Christmas. And when you're living in another country, Thanksgiving is one that's like this. It never feels like Thanksgiving. I go to work on Thanksgiving. I go to work the day after Thanksgiving. If we want to celebrate Thanksgiving, we have to do it like on a Friday night or Saturday night. And that's weird. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so I feel like our family kind of had to get behind this mental block of Mm -hmm. this is celebrated this way. And if we don't celebrate it this way, it doesn't feel like it. And and we Mm -hmm. did it exactly the way you said. We came up with, okay, how does this look here in Mm Uruguay? And really, what is the most important part? You really have to think about that when all of these other things aren't available to you, you know, when these customs and traditions aren't available to you. You're not around your family, which is a big one that makes it not feel like Christmas or Easter when Mm -hmm. you're not around your family. And so you have these new traditions. So for us, because we don't have family here, we do have friends and and colleagues that also don't have family here. And so Mm -hmm. that has become our tradition to, to find other people who become our family. And little by little, it feels more like Easter and and Christmas, but it's also that rhythm of going to church. You know, we have a service on Thursday, we have a service on Friday, we have a service on Sunday. 
It doesn't matter if five people come or 50 people come. You know, we still have that observance of those days Mm -hmm. in family, with our friends, with our colleagues. And that's what makes it still feel like Easter. Yeah, it's it's great that you are looking at what the essentials are of the celebration. You know, we've we've all individually and together studied a few different kinds of traditions around the world, holiday traditions. And the thing that we notice again and again is that all Christians celebrate Easter somehow. Mm -hmm. And usually it involves good food and family gatherings, church Mm -hmm. gatherings, extra services, sometimes processions, you know, all of those things, but they don't always look the same. Right. You know, and so obviously we would not expect an Easter in Uruguay to necessarily involve dozens of plastic Easter eggs filled with jelly beans out on the lawn. Maybe you do that, but maybe you mark the day in other ways that are more contextually appropriate. (laughs) That the important thing is understanding that there's a reason to celebrate and then celebrating. Along those same lines, what do you as a congregation do? Obviously, you said you have church services. Are there are there special things you do to celebrate Holy Week and especially Easter morning? I think the thing, the biggest thing we do is that we make sure that we we always have these services no matter what. So people know these are available. Please come. You know, if you're mm-hmm. here, please come. Bring your family. We're still trying to develop some traditions in our church. Mm-hmm. We have a lot of members who are still quite new. Uh, We Mm -hmm. have a lot of people who are new Christians. And so we're still trying to figure out what are some of these traditions? What are some of these activities that we can make traditions as part of our Mm -hmm. church? Mm -hmm. Are there any that you've tried out so far? Um, Well, Sunday morning, a few times we've had Easter morning breakfast together and we do it like potluck style where everybody brings something and we come early to church and we all have like a little breakfast before church starts. We have church and you can stay as long as you want, but normally people are going off to to other things. But doing it before church has been Mm -hmm. good um, because Mm -hmm. then people aren't like, oh, I can't stay. You know, it's about (laughs) coming and, and having that fellowship, having that time before church to encourage people to come. So we do see some tradition there in the foods that people bring because there there are a few traditional things that they always have here for Easter. For little kids, it's chocolate eggs. Yes. And so they don't do like the plastic eggs with the jelly beans and, and things like mm-hmm. what you were saying, but the chocolate yeah. eggs are a big deal. So if you mm-hmm. go in any supermarket in Uruguay right now, you will see giant chocolate eggs the size of your head. And they are ornately decorated with frosting. They're all sorts of colors. And sometimes there are other decorations on. And they can be quite expensive depending on how large and how ornate they are. (laughs) But you can also buy smaller ones that are like, what are Herrera Rocher chocolate eggs? Mm. And so you can get those kinds of of smaller ones as well. But that's a big one. So all kids are Uh expecting chocolate eggs on on Easter mornings. And another one is they have this cake that's, oh, the name of it is Rosca de Pascua. And so it's just like Mm. the round of Easter. It kind of looks like a bundt cake, but the Mm -hmm. reason it's different is because it's a yeasted cake. And I guess this is like way back in like Catholic tradition of not using eggs and flour and yeast and everything Uh, during Lent. So the very Mm -hmm. first one is all of those things. It's flour and yeast and sugar and cream and all of those things in one cake. And so that's a very traditional food for Easter morning. Okay, Googling Rosca de Pascua, (laughs) because that sounds amazing. It's a giant donut. Oh, yes. I was like, the only only thing I can think comparable would be a yeast donut. We just don't do, but that looks, oh, yeah, okay. It's yeah. kind of like having ideas. a big <laughs> Danish cake. That's kind of what it mm-hmm. seems like to me. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. Cake. I'm not on deck to make dessert for this year for Easter. But next time I am, this is my recipe. I'm going to try out. <laughs> really so <good>. cool. <laughs> nice. Might have to use Google Translate for <laughs> instructions, <laughs> but I'm willing to do that. Excellent. <laughs> Make, 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 yeah. Also, the 
chocolate egg the size of my head just sounds like a mm. Brie, wasn't very, that in your podcast? It was. It's from Argentina, I yeah. guess. Yes. Well, right next to Uruguay. Yes. Hey. Yeah. As I now know. <laughs> Remember when I thought Mexico was in Central America that, during that episode? <laughs> Do you want to hear a funny, very funny, funny story about all of this? Mm. Angie's husband was my geography teacher in high school. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Terrible. when you get to that part of the episode of the Easter egg episode <laughs> and I make a complete and total fool uh, of myself and I'm like, Mexico is Central America, right? It's not my fault. Uh, <laughs> it ain't. <laughs> James is going to come find you. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> Remedial Any geography part. for Brie Gertz. That's right. <laughs> he was actually Anyways. asking if he could, uh, like, I don't podcast bomb. Is that the the verb for it? Yes, uh, I guess if he today. wanted to, <laughs> he totally should. Oh my goodness! Yeah, my husband does it all the time. My kids do it. My dog does it. Bree's dog does it. <laughs> mm -hmm. My cats do it. Uh huh. <laughs> it's would not be the first time. So for no. all, so. <laughs> yeah. would be. <laughs> So I, I'm I'm curious how this how this plays out. Sorry, going back to Holy Week. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the reason we're here <laughs> on topic. I'm curious how this plays out then, because you you have this this week of tourism during the week, but then are there still actual like recognized Easter celebrations at the end of that that week of tourism? Is that how that works? Well, it's really seen as a day that you spend with your family. That's the most okay. important uh, thing, uh, and so. Like for, for those of us who go to church, it's about spending time with our family after church, right? Going to church mm -hmm. together. But for everyone else, it's a family day. It's a day that you go to grandma's house and you barbecue because that's what Uruguayans love to do for holidays. They love cooking over a wood fire on mm. eating lamb, eating meat, and, and being together yeah. as a family. Yeah. Yeah. And I can see how that, that can be like this insidious challenge mm -hmm. for for new christians that mm -hmm. sorry you're asking me to not spend time with my family right. which, right. We, which we see as a thing. good exactly. thing exactly yeah, yeah. Right. no this all sounds wonderful so long as you went to church wow. yeah first. Right. <laughs> and it, honestly it was really smart for the government to replace religion with something like the family because everybody's like oh family that's so good right you know it's, why a, it's a virtue it's a good gift of god it is oh. good <laughs> mm. that's oh yeah no that sounds that sounds lovely but cool. i do see how it would be a definite challenge yes for sure um, and it is interesting to hear you talk about how this all works in uruguay because as we see uh, the united states becoming gradually more and more secular mm -hmm. just of its own accord we see that everything that's happening there is beginning to happen here, you know, just on a sort of s delayed timetable. Right. But right. where you are, that's where we're headed. And it's it's good for us to hear how you are addressing these challenges and trying to maintain and grow a community of faith, even in a place that just doesn't care mm -hmm. and has been sort of taught not to care. I think the interesting thing is Uruguay has been secular for so long that mm -hmm. you will still meet people who really have no background of what Christianity is. So mm. it's become yeah. interesting again. You know, like, so yeah. what do you believe? Mm. What does Lutheran mean? So we mm. still reach people who just are really curious because they don't know. Mm -hmm. They don't have, and I feel like in the U.S., Christianity has somewhat become a, a like a, a bad word right yeah where yeah. it's like ooh, christians th everyone that, thinks they know what it's about exactly right. everyone thinks that they know what it's about but maybe they don't really know but right. here we often find a clean slate mm -hmm. what do christians believe mm -hmm. it's a truly fallow field right hmm. huh do you think that makes it easier um, like witnessing i think at this point it can open a door I don't think it makes okay. it easier because you're starting from nothing almost, right? Right. And, and so you have to have that, where do I start? Mm -hmm. Right. And, and so that can be a little bit hard sometimes. Usually for me, that where to start, the actions speak louder than words. 
Mm-hmm. Caring mm-hmm. for someone, loving someone mm-hmm. no matter what is a, a great way to start. Mm-hmm. And then sharing why. You know, why do mm-hmm. I why do I do this? It's because of my faith. It's because we're children of God. It's because mm-hmm. God loves us. That's why. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a powerful witness to care for other people who don't think they deserve to be cared for. Mm-hmm. I feel like James has talked about this in uh, when you guys were here in his presentation. Yes. I think he has he has stories about meeting people who are like, Why why are you even doing this for me? I I don't yes. deserve your help. Mm-hmm. And they're At kind all. of waiting for that other shoe to drop. Like, why yeah, are right. they helping me? What's behind this? And when they recognize that the motives are true, um, mm-hmm. it's a little bit surprising sometimes. But yeah. mm-hmm. it, it's also a, a beautiful witness. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm curious about the actual Holy Week services. So, for mm-hmm. example, on Palm Sunday, do you guys get it? Do you, do you have palms? Are you able to access the palms? Or? We, we can go outside and get our palms. Okay. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Locally sourced. Yeah. Locally sourced palms. You don't yeah. have to pre order from the florist six weeks no, ahead of time. Right. No. <laughs> Oriental you training. Have to have a ladder long enough to, to reach them. There you go. <laughs> okay. Fantastic. Do you, what do you do with yeah. the palms? Yeah. Do you, is there a procession or what? We've done a few different things over the years. So we like to get the children involved if possible. So there have been years where we gave all of the children palms and had them stand in the aisle as the pastors came up and we were singing Hosanna. And we've done other traditions. Like I said before, we're still kind of looking for that one thing that we do every year. But we definitely, we have palms. We talk about what Palm Sunday means. In uh, Sunday school, we always either make a palm or do something, some craft with a palm and talk about the lesson for the day. But I think it looks a lot like what a church in the U.S. would would do mm-hmm. just with our locally sourced palms. <laughs> awesome. Okay. <laughs> okay. What about for Maundy Thursday? Do you do stripping of the altar at the mm. end of the service? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. So, we do have a, a service on Monday, Thursday. We strip the altar at the end of the the Monday, Thursday service so that mm-hmm. when we come in on, on Good Friday, everything is, the altar is stripped and everything is covered in black cloth. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So we, okay. we do that. And Monday, Thursday is actually one of my favorite services because yes. we, we sing a, a song at the end as they're stripping the altar and then everyone leaves in silence which Mm. is very different from how everyone leaves a normal Mm. church service. And so that really Mm. marks it as something different. It's hard to leave in silence because that Mm. fellowship at the end of the church service is something that people really like. And and I don't know if it's Uruguayans in general or the Uruguayans who come to our church. We love to chat after the service. We're standing Mm. in the hall. We're standing outside. And everybody's chatting and talking and, and we stay around for a, a little bit. And so oh, for Lutherans. this, yeah, for this <laughs> to be so different, it really does make it, it makes you think, you know, this is a different mm-hmm. day. This is a special day. And, and this is why. You yeah. mentioned that you sing a song. Is it the same song every year or do you, is it just a, a different hymn every time? Yes. We usually sing Manos Cariñosas, which are like loving hands. Mm. Oh, okay. And that's just like an our church tradition. That's one that uh-huh. we we sing at the end of that. It talks about his loving hands, the hands of Jesus who brought the the heavy cross that he knew what he was going to do was for our good and thank you to these loving hands. Oh, so like the perfect. marks in the the hands. Yeah. 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 Jesus is the Wonderful. best. Right? <laughs> yes. Oh, so much yes. <laughs> What about your Good Friday? I'm just moving around. Yeah. I want to yeah. go. Yeah. Moving yeah. through. <laughs> is it, it's funny. an evening service. It's actually in the morning. We do ours in oh, the morning. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Okay. Remix. So that's something okay. a little bit different. Okay. Yeah. We do it in the morning. And, and that's really to give people the chance to spend the evening in family. So we're not fighting that cultural thing mm. so much. 
And so we do it Friday morning. It's usually a pretty short service. Mm-hmm. You know, the altar is already there. We have a right. few songs, the message, the the readings, but it's pretty like bare bones, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. I think is, you know, shows what Suits the, the day is. Too. Yeah, it yeah. does. Mm-hmm. It does. Do you have a strepitus? Strepitus. What is, is that? Is it a tenebrae service? No. no. Strepitus it's a big, is what that makes it a big, the yeah. big bang at the end of Good Friday. Oh, uh, no. <laughs> makes my least favorite that. part of the church year. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. I always forget it's coming and then I jump out of my skin. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it. Last year we did it with a timpani roll and then somebody like stomped on this box in the balcony and it was magnificently terrible. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. you're be like someone went, but um, like what? <laughs> no. No. It was, it was, anyway. Do they do that? No. Brie really wants to. That would really <laughs> scare me. I am not a balloon yeah. person for that very reason. <laughs> no, <laughs> me so. either. Uh, you know, a balloon and a straight pen would make an excellent strepidus. <laughs> I will not recommend it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's Adiaphora. It does not yeah, need true. to to oh. be an essential part of Uruguayan yeah. Lutheran worship. Exactly. And like that one is, is really, cool. it is cool. part of the Tenebrae service. Yeah. It's not yes. part of like the Traore service. Right. There's, there's there's a whole bunch of different ways. You can I'm do only moderately Friday. disappointed. So. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> okay. So yours is more of a very simple for Good Friday. Yes. Okay. And then you said... Then the next one Sunday. is Sunday, Sunday. Mm-hmm. Easter. Sunday, do you Sunday, do just Sunday. one service on Easter or do you have multiple services on Easter? Just one service on Easter. So we okay. usually have the breakfast Same. before <laughs> and then we have church. Church is usually okay. really long because we sing all the songs. Um, yes. Yes. So, yeah, it's a little bit longer, okay. but that's OK. And then, it, you know, it's a it's like a, a Sunday service, but just a little bit more. Mm, yes. Mm. Okay. As it should be. As okay. it should be. Do you have any special decorations that you do Ooh. on Easter Sunday? Um, Because you've had the the altar was stripped down for Good Friday. So do you it, bring in yeah. anything extra? Or is it more of a, now we are back to celebrating Sunday? I, I think know, it's yeah. more, we're back to celebrating Sunday. People tend to dress up a little bit more on Easter Sunday. Okay. But not mm-hmm. to the extent like what I would normally see in, in the U.S., People are much more casual here, even at church, than Hmm. most churches in the United States. Like, wearing jeans to church is perfectly normal. No one would be like, oh, why are they wearing jeans? But sometimes people like to to dress up, and certain people dress up more than other people. It's a a personal choice. But people do tend to dress up a little bit more for Easter. Okay. Excellent. What about, okay, one more question. (laughs) So you said you have special music. Do you guys have any special like musicians sort of special offerings of music or is it mostly just all the congregation all singing together it depends on the easter we have one of our pastors that's the chaplain in the school here plays piano we have some members who play guitar and drums and things so it's really about who's available and who can attend the the church service that day and oftentimes it's a mix. So we'll have some songs that are with the piano, some songs that are with guitar. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes we have a song leader. Sometimes we don't. We don't have an organ. So that is one big difference. So okay. we don't get yeah. organ music yeah. here. Right. But uh, mostly it's hymns with the piano or hymns or praise songs with guitar. Mm-hmm. Okay, I have one more question. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I have one when you're done. Whenever we're ready for the last question, I have the last question. My last question on on this particular topic is what about the special Easter responsive greeting? I don't know, can I say it? anyway, you know, the classic <laughs> one. Shmi shmiz shmizen. Yes. <laughs> we, we do we do have the classic that, we okay. do have the okay. greeting in Spanish. Okay. Of course. That's it's a little bit different. So how do you how do you say it in Spanish? Oh, you're putting me on the spot. I haven't done this for a while. I'm so sorry. It's in English mode right now. <laughs> it's really hard to so change the chip. Fascinated. Yes. Yeah. Oh no, just I know. Code switch, Angie, just code switch. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we, instead of Alleluia, because of the accent that 
Uruguayans and Argentines use, we say alelucia because the Ys are pronounced like a sh sound. Okay. Um, And so it will start with Jesus ha resultado, Jesus has risen. And then we say alelucia, amen. Oh, Oh. nice. Okay. That, that's good. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So how do these traditions, how did all of this, all of these things that you do, how does this, or does it help you reach out in the community and talk about Jesus more and bring people into your church? Do these traditions, because you're so different from what everybody else in culture is doing, does that help you kind of talk to people about it and bring people in? I think especially the service that we do on Monday, Thursday, it can. We've kind of used that as an outreach because it's a very distinctive service with the the clearing of the altar at the end. We've had people invite family and friends to come for that specific service Mm -hmm. because it resonates. You know, it's Mm -hmm. not just going on a Sunday and and having it be what they're used to. There's a little Mm -hmm. surprise at the end. And Mm -hmm. so I think that has been something that we have used as as almost like an outreach type of thing. And I, I think it, it depends on where people are are coming from, you know, if they're searching or not. Mm-hmm. But if they're searching, there you are. Right. <laughs> so my question for you is this. Obviously, you're in Uruguay and we're in America. We have obviously some very similar contexts, but some very different contexts. Are there any words of greeting and encouragement that you would like to share with our listeners here in America from where you are as a, well, I mean, you're a missionary. Can you be a missionary to us and, and, <laughs> and share an Easter greeting with our listeners? I think that the most important thing that I've come to realize about being a missionary is that it doesn't matter where you are, that missionary just means that you're sent, right? You're sent by, by God and he sends us wherever we are. And so what we can do and what we can do best is to love one another, serve one another, care for one another, and the rest tends to fall into place. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the words come, he provides those words, he provides those opportunities. I've had so many opportunities when I didn't think I was going to have an opportunity to share my faith and to witness to someone. And mm-hmm. it, it's like 95% like that, you know, <laughs> it, it's, it's, you just nice. have to, you kind of have to be ready at, at all times. But also I've been so blessed in those opportunities that I've had that somehow the right things came out. You know, I said mm-hmm. the right things. I didn't make a mistake. I always think of, oh, I could have said this also at the end, you know, hmm. but yeah. I, that's just like the the perfectionist in, in me. Sometimes we have to just be content with planting the seed and not seeing the fruit. Yep. And yeah. that's a, a big part of missionary life. But I, I feel like I've gotten better at being content with that, knowing that there was a seed planted, knowing that I was able to witness to someone I can't even count the number of times I was starting an English class and we start with a little small talk, chit chat. And all of a sudden there's this giant question that comes out like, so what do Lutherans believe or what's baptism? <laughs> you know? And I'm thinking we're talking about like gerunds or something today. And that whole thing <laughs> goes out the window. Um, what's vicarious atonement? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What? So, but those are, those are beautiful opportunities and I, I'm yeah. very thankful for that. Yeah. Jaren oh, and- ministry. <laughs> Jaren <laughs> ministry. English grammar. English grammar ministry. Opening for evangelism. Oh, I love that. As the English major, I, I really, really appreciate that. Excellent. <laughs> love to think that all that grammar can be used for the, for the sake of the church. the sake of the gospel (laughs) absolutely yes (laughs) well angie we are so glad that you're out there doing what you're doing and representing us and representing christ out in out in uruguay because it it sounds like it's a good place to have lutheran missionaries i believe so we're getting more soon so we're very excited yeah you are it's wonderful Pastor Phil and Deaconess Rachel Jacek. Oh, wonderful. Well, yeah. 
blessings to Pastor and Rachel Joseph and to you and to your whole team. That's oh, fantastic. More people, more work. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Angie, it's been super fun having you in the lounge today. Thanks for joining us internationally today to be our guest. <laughs> Thank you. You'll have to pardon my Spanish today. I refuse to Don't pardon Don't judge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if we can judge it wonderful, can we do that? Because that's what I was doing. <laughs> Where can people find more about you and Pastor Sharp? Where can we learn more about your work in Uruguay? You can find us at lcms.org slash sharp. Oh, that's easy. Easy enough. <laughs> that's like a super cool link. <laughs> sharp into the LCMS website. It's oh, true. Oh, very sharp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll also include a link if people want to sign up for yes. their newsletter. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm. That link in the show notes. Yes, we can. Yeah, definitely. Check out the show notes. As always, they are full of extra information. <laughs> Yes. And if you like even more extra information, you can join our group on Facebook (laughs) and be in our community with thousands of other Lutheran ladies from around the world. I'm sure we'll talk about some Holy Week traditions in the Facebook group. This is dropping on Good Friday, so we probably have already talked about that if we were smart and posted that post already. Future will enjoy hearing how you all celebrated Holy Week this year. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we will. Join our group there on Facebook, the Lutheran Lutheran Ladies Lounge. You can also follow us on Instagram at Lutheran Ladies Lounge. Share your pictures of Holy Week and Easter and tag us, Lutheran Ladies Lounge. We would love to see those pictures. We'll share them in our story as well. If you like to get Lutheran Ladies Lounge in your inbox or if you are not on social media, you can get our e newsletter. It comes out every month. You can find out how to do that in the show notes of this episode, or you can send an email to lutheranladies at kfuo.org, and we'll get you signed up for that e-newsletter. Find all of the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast episodes at kfuo.org slash Lutheran Ladies Lounge, or on the KFUO radio app, or on your favorite podcasting app. You're listening to the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast. I'm Sarah. I'm Erin. I'm Bree. And I learned so much this episode. Thank you so much, Angie. (laughs) I'm glad to know you. (laughs) KFUO Radio and the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast are underwritten in part by Ad Crucem. Visit them online at adcrucem.com. Views and opinions expressed on the Lutheran Ladies Lounge podcast may not represent the official position of the management or ownership of KFUO Radio, the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. The Lutheran Ladies Lounge is produced by KFUO Radio and available at kfuo.org or wherever you get your podcasts. Join our community on Facebook in the Lutheran Ladies Lounge. Time out. Who's introducing our guest? I didn't ask. Sorry. I guess you are. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Okay, I, I, I I will introduce her. Okay, that Do was it. in my head, but okay. yes, yes, Time yes. this is boom. Aaron Sperm. <laughs> I don't even remember where I left off. <laughs> you are you're we're in Montevideo. We've ridden the flying pink couch. We're in Montevideo. We're in Mon- Montevideo, Uruguay. Okay, so how then? How the? It's been a long day, guys. <laughs> <laughs> And where can find people? Where can find people? Wow! <laughs> where can find people? Such a long week. Did you say it's been a such a long week? Yes, <laughs> it's Monday. It's Monday. Monday bro. I drove ten hours yesterday to get home from Pittsburgh. I'm really tired. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Time in.